In this video, we'll use shader graph to create a grass shader that sways in the wind. While we'll be using grass as an example, the shader can easily be used for other kinds of foliage. To achieve this effect, we'll be using vertex displacement. What this means is that we'll be using shader graph to control the positions of the vertices in our mesh. In our case, we want to take these vertices and offset them in a way that feels like they're being affected by wind. In fact, vertex displacement can be used to create all kinds of cool looking effects, from waves in water to swimming fish. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. And special thanks to Jack Jubert, Andrew Kalenko, John Shannon, Infinity PBR, and Glasswell Entertainment for their support on Patreon. Also, I just recovered from a cold, so if my voice sounds a bit off, I apologize, that is why. And with that, let's get started. In this video, we'll be using the HD render pipeline, but you can of course get a very similar result using lightweight. The project here is already set up for HDRP. We'll of course have a link in the description on how to do this in case you're interested. So first we need to make sure that HDRP is up to date. To do this, we'll go window, we'll select the package manager, We'll make sure to show preview packages and scroll to where it says high definition render pipeline. Now mine is already up to date, otherwise you will have an option here to update it. Now as you can see I've gone ahead and set up a simple example scene here. I just have a cube as the floor and then I have these different grass objects spread out. Now the assets that I'm using here are really simple. As you can see I have the grass mesh, which is basically just a collection of intersecting planes. And then I have three textures that we're going to be using. If you want to download these assets, I'll of course have a link to them in the description. But as you can see, our grass doesn't currently look a lot like grass. So let's go ahead and change this with a shader. Let's go to our project and hit create. We'll go under shader. And because we're using HDRP, we'll go under HDRP and select the lit graph. This is much like the PBR graph for lightweight. We then name our shader. I'm just going to call it grass. And we can then double click it to open it in shader graph. So before we actually start modifying this shader, let's go ahead and change our preview to instead of showing a sphere, it will actually show our grass object. To do this, we'll right click, hit custom mesh, and then we can simply select our grass mesh. There we go. And first what I would like to do is start with what I like to call the base shader. And by the base shader, I mean the part of this shader that allows us to plug in a few textures to make our grass actually look like grass. Now in our case, we have three different textures. The first one of these is the base color. So let's go to our blackboard here and let's create a new texture. And we'll call this one base color. And as the default texture, let's go ahead and select our green grass albedo. We can then take this texture from our blackboard and make a node out of it. Now you might think that you can just plug this directly into our base color, but because this is a texture and our base color is a vector three, we first need to go through a sample texture node and we can then take the output of this node and plug it into our base color. And as you can see, our grass is now colored. However, we can't actually see the shape of our grass yet. And the reason for this is that we also need to take the alpha of our base color and plug into the alpha slot. And by default, this isn't going to change anything. The reason for this is that we need to go to our litmaster settings. So press this cog here and change the surface type from opaque to transparent because we want everything around our grass to be transparent. And as you can see, this already kind of works. We also need to go down here and select alpha clipping to make sure everything around our glass won't be included. So stuff like specular lighting will disappear. And there we go. Our grass is starting to look like grass. You'll also see that if we look at our grass from behind, it disappears. The reason for this is that we need our grass to be double sided. To do this, we'll go to the double sided parameter and change from disabled to flipped normals. And we can now see our grass from behind as well. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and create our next texture 2D. We'll call this one metallic. Let's change the default texture to the blue one here. Let's also drag this in. Let's hook it up to a sample texture node. Now this texture is pretty cool because it's created in such a way that the different color channels contain different information about our material. So the red channel here is meant to control the metallic property. The green channel will control the smoothness and the alpha channel is going to control our ambient occlusion. So as you can see, this already made the grass look a lot more realistic and added a lot of depth. And we're now ready to add the last texture. So let's go ahead and create a texture 2D and this is going to be a normal map. I'm going to set the default texture here to the green grass normal. I'm going to make a bit of space for this. Let's drag it in. Let's hook it up to a sample texture node. Now for this one, we want to change the type from default to normal because we're working with a normal map. And we can just go ahead and plug this directly into the normal slot. 
And that's pretty much it for the base part of our shader. I'm just gonna go ahead and collapse all these. Let's hit save asset. And if we hit back into Unity, we can select the material that is currently applied to all of our grass meshes. And here we can change the shader to shader graph grass. And as you can see, we now have grass in our scene. Really, really cool. So that concludes the base shader. Now we need to add vertex animation to actually make the grass move with the wind. To do this, we modified the position input of the lid master node. Now this is done in three steps. First, we get the position of our object's vertices in world space. World space means that the position is relative to the center of our scene. We use the X and Y positions to create UVs and offset these UVs over time. For the second step, we generate some noise in world space based on the UVs. Think of it like we are overlaying a scrolling noise texture on top of our entire scene that will affect all of our grass. Now based on this noise texture, we can push and pull the grass on the X axis. For low values or black parts, we pull on the vertices and for high values or white parts, we push on them. Now we could stop here, but the effect would look pretty weird because the grass would be moving equally from top to bottom. Instead, for our third step, we want to make sure the bottom of our grass stays in place. To do this, we need to create a gradient that goes from bottom to top, where the bottom value is zero and the top value is one. This means that at the bottom, we will have low values that result in no or little movement, and at the top, we will have higher values resulting in more movement. To create this gradient, we use the local UVs of our grass model. As you can see from the grass textures, our model is set up in such a way where the bottom of the texture is at the bottom of the model, and the top of the texture is at the top of the model. Because UVs go from 0 to 1 naturally, we can just use the y-axis of our model's UVs as our gradient. Now if that confused you in any way, I completely understand. UVs and vertices can be hard to wrap your head around at first. If you'd like to get a deeper understanding of the two, we have a small video series on mesh generation that I recommend you check out. Or you can just follow me for now. So this here is the base part of our shader. Now for step 1, the very first thing that we want to do is create a position node. This is simply going to get the position of our vertice in world space. We're also going to create a tiling and offset node. As the name suggests, this allows us to offset UVs. In our case, we want to do this over time to create the scrolling effect. So we'll take the position of our vertices and input that as our UVs. And then to offset them over time, we first need to create a time node. And we could plug this in directly, or we could create a property that allows us to control how fast this should be. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's create a vector 2 because we want to control it on both the X and the Y. Let's call it wind movement. I'm just going to default it to 6 on the X and 0 on the Y. And let's drag it in here. So now we can simply multiply our time with our wind movements. Let's take our time here, pull it out into a multiply node and take our wind movement and plug it into the other part of our multiply node. Let's take the output here and plug it into the offset. And I'm just going to collapse this here and pull them together to create a bit of space. And while we're not seeing anything yet, that is pretty much it for step one. We've now created the UVs and they are being offset over time. Next step is adding the noise. Let's go ahead and create a gradient noise node. As you can see, this creates some pseudo random noise and we can go ahead and control the scale of it right here. In fact, let's go ahead and change the scale based on a property. So let's go ahead and create a vector one. Let's call it wind density and let's just default it to something like two. Let's drag it in here and plug it into our scale. Cool. And you might have guessed it at this point, but our gradient noise has a UV input. Let's go ahead and take the UVs from our tiling and offset node and just plug them right in there. And you can now see that our noise is scrolling by over time based on our wind movement. And that we can zoom in and out based on the wind density. Really cool. Now again, I'm just going to collapse some of this to make some more room. And we want to play around with this noise a bit to give it the strength that we want. So the first problem with our noise as it is, is that all the values are currently going between 0 and 1, from black to white. Now by itself that's fine, but the problem in our case is that if all the values are positive, we're always going to be pushing on the grass. We also want to pull it back. So since all the values are between 0 and 1, we can really simply change this by just subtracting by 0.5. So let's take the output here, put it into a subtract node. Let's just subtract by 0.5. This way our noise will now go between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And you might already kind of start to feel how this organic-like movement can be used to emulate stuff like wind. 
Of course, we want to be able to control the strength of our wind. So let's go ahead and create a vector one for this as well. Let's call it wind strength. And let's default this to 0.3. We'll simply take this wind strength and multiply it together with our noise. So we'll create a multiply node here and plug those two in. So we've now just reduced the strength of our wind a bit. And by strength, I mean how harshly our wind is going to influence our grass. So at this point, we have a scrolling noise texture. The next thing that we want to do is use this noise to offset the exposition of our vertices. So let's go ahead and take all of this and make some more room. And again, we can go ahead and get the current position of our vertices by simply writing position. Let's go ahead and output this into a split node. This is going to take our three components, X, Y, and Z, and separate them. As you can see, it's named them R, G, and B, and the A channel can just be ignored. So if we want to offset on the X, we need to modify the R channel. In fact, let's just take our noise here and add it right on top. So let's create an add node. Let's take the output of our noise. Let's take the X of our position, so the R channel here, and add them together. And you can now see the effect that our noise has on our X axis. Really cool. Let's move this over here. And again, let's make some more space. Now the other two components, Y and Z, we want to stay the same. So let's use a combine node to take the X into our R channel, the Y to the Y, and the Z to the Z. There we go. So we're just keeping the same values here, but we are adding the noise on top of our X. Awesome. And that is it for step two. Now at this point, we're ready to see how this looks in the scene. The only problem is that our coordinates are currently in world space. And as you can see, our master node wants the position in object space. In other words, we need to convert from being relative to the center of our scene to being relative to the center of our object. Luckily, there is a handy node that will do this conversion for us. It's called the transform node. And we use it to simply convert from world space to object space. Now, in lightweight, we would go ahead and simply plug this right in and then plug it directly into the position on our master node. However, as you can see, our preview disappears. That's because this doesn't work in HDRP because it uses camera relative rendering. Because of this, we first need to subtract our camera position. For lightweight, you can completely skip this step, but all we need to do is before we transform our position, we need to subtract. So we'll add a subtract node here. And the value that we need to subtract is our camera position. So camera position, there we go. And we can then put that into the transform node. So just a tiny extra step that we need to do because of how the renderer works. And now if we save the asset and head into Unity, we can see the noise working on our grass. Of course, it currently looks really weird. But that's mostly because we need to adjust the settings for our grass. So let's go ahead and select our grass material. And I think the main problem here is that our wind density is way too high. I'm going to go ahead and dial this down to something like 0.06. And already I think that starts to look a lot more like wind. We can also see the definite problem of a grass moving with the base as well. So let's go ahead and change this with the third and final step. So to make sure the bottom of the grass stays fixed to the ground, we need to first of all create a gradient based on our UVs. So let's again add some more space here. And we want to do this before we start converting everything into object space. And getting the UVs of our object is super simple. We just create a UV node. And this now has the UVs of our model. Now, as we discussed, we want to use the Y axis of our UVs. So we need to split this using a split node and only take the Y axis, which is the green channel. In fact, let's just try and preview this. And as you can see, this creates a really nice gradient going from black to white. So we'll take this gradient here and we'll use it to interpolate between the offset position that we created here and the default position that our vertices have. To do this, we're going to use a LERP node. So LERP stands for linear interpolation, and it's going to allow us to transition between two values based on a third value. Now that sounds more complicated than it really is. All that we do is that we plug in our first value, which is the default position of our vertices. So just the position here, we're simply going to plug that into value A. Then we take the second value. So in our case, that's the offset position of our vertices. So that is the output of our combined node here. And we want to blend between the two based on the gradient of our UVs here. So we'll simply input that as the T value. 
So when t is zero and our gradient is black, we're going to be using the default position. And as we get higher and our gradient becomes more white and we get closer to one, we're going to be using more of the offset position. So really cool. And we now just take the output of this and put it into our subtract node, do all of the conversion from world to object space. And that pretty much concludes our entire grass shader. If we now just move this over to make it look a bit neater and hit save asset and go into Unity, voila, we can see it working. As you can see, the base of our grass stays fixed to the ground. And as we get higher and higher, more and more of the grass is influenced. We can also see that it looks fairly nice and random and that the grass is kind of moving together in chunks. You can of course always go into the material settings and change stuff like how much the wind moves. Let's try and double that to get kind of more rapid changes. You can also change the wind strength if you want it to more heavily influence the grass. This might be a bit much. And you can change the wind density to control if you want to move different parts locally or if you want the grass to kind of move together as a unit. Awesome! That's pretty much it for this video. If you want to learn more about vertex displacement or how you can get more advanced with vegetation in general, we'll definitely have some links for that in the description. Also, thanks to Unity, we are flying to GDC this week, which means there won't be a video next Sunday. However, we will be live streaming the Unity GDC keynote on March 18 at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So stay tuned for that. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in February, and a special thanks to James P, Jack Dubert, Andrew Kalinko, John Shannon, Infinity PPR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Travis Dillon, Faisal Marify, Leo Lissette, Runin, Clinton Fenskiwa, Chris, Mechanical Mind, Frank Soulong, Kasten Suerland, Gregory Pierce, Kill Swedeski, Rob Fairn, Tima Folderbach, Erasmus, and Naoki Wasaki. You guys rock!